absolutely not what I would do if going out in the field. Check it, check it. Take a look at this. I got, got the receipts, because you all know. And I got the laptop. And if I'm not the soul of your design, I plainly decline. It was me. Your remedy. I have no idea what I went through to find that. Dude, we all know what you go through to get this stuff. It's fine. It's totally fine. Okay, just calm down. You don't even know about the adrenaline. So, I'll leave. I'd rather be a dreamer. I'd rather be free. I'd rather be a leader. I'd rather be a queen. I'd rather be a singer in a trashy cover band. I wasn't always just a single shade, a palette full of gray in reverie. And I can burn it brighter than the sun. I have a golden gun inside of me Don't box me in Don't or I'll leave I'd rather be a dreamer I'd rather be free I'd rather be a leader I'd rather be a queen I'd rather be a singer In a trashy cover band I'd rather be a closer I'd rather be clean I'd rather be a poser in a magazine Pretty much anything else. And if I fall behind, ignoring all the signs. And if I lose the fight. All right, everybody, let me know if you can see and hear me. I am on Rumble on X and here on YouTube as well. Uh, we got some new stuff going on, always trying to do as much new stuff as possible. Um, I recently decided that I'm gonna start doing my live streams, the night streams also on Rumble. At the moment from looking, it seems like the competition is pretty slim uh, and I got to look at exactly how the monetization works, but I think they're just going to let people subscribe to the channel at the very baseline and keep all of the money, which is just not even normal. That's crazy that that's the thing. Anyway, I had a great time doing some, some gaming and hanging out with Freethinkers Rebellion. So for anyone who's into that, I have that channel, which also is on YouTube as Jeff Aside Live. But... Here, we're going to be getting into uh, a whole lot of crazy new stuff that's going on. So let me crack a second screen here. Great. Uh, there's things going on that I just don't understand. And hopefully you guys can help me out. But first thing you can do to help me out is to like the stream. Okay, this is a brand new channel, The Thoughtcast. Uh, you guys have helped get it to over 100 subscribers already, which is amazing for the amount of time that it's been up. Uh, I created, and I will link right now on YouTube, a new Rumble channel for The Thoughtcast. And I moved all the prior Thoughtcasts that were on Rumble to that channel so if i ever go down or anything crazy happens uh that will exist at least but this is a brand new channel so i'm gonna hit you guys with that so that's the rumble link and that is a static rumble link that will supposedly always take you to the live stream for that channel so that should get you to every single, that one link should connect you to every single thought cast that's on Rumble. We can get this to work. I'm going to as a simulcast situation. So for the people who want to support the channel, obviously I have like the buy me a coffee, the Patreon, 
And then if you go to Rumble, apparently you can start subscribing to that channel right away. If not, let me know, because it's brand new to me. This is a learning experience, so I'm trying to figure it out too. But hell froze over. This is not the first time that I have agreed with Fetterman. That, I mean, okay, he's on The View, which deserves no respect whatsoever. Uh, but he goes on there wearing a hoodie, which is appropriate. That's, that's about the level of professionalism you should give to, to the ladies of The View. But listen to this. background here there we go good enough All right, so the long and the short of it is we have this guy Santos that they, they're getting rid of from the Republican side, and he's saying, well, the Democrats have Menendez, and that guy needs to go too. And I'm just thinking, wow, yes, absolutely correct. The other side of it is <coughs> we need to have the innocent until proven guilty bit, because otherwise the uniparty swamp is just going to vote out whoever's trouble for the club, and it's not going to matter whether they're innocent or guilty and they're kind of midway. So yeah, Santos can go, most of the swamp can go, but one, it needs to be on both sides, as he is alluding to, and then two, there needs to be, uh, you know, the due process. We need to have people actually convicted of doing something wrong. Now, we've seen one side get convicted and then the other side acquitted for doing the same kinds of things, so that's its own can of worms we can get into. But it's very odd and crazy to me that Fetterman, although stroked out and struggling. Oh, no, I'll, I'll play the sound. That's brutal. They didn't put the sound in. Hang on. Up screen, present. Come on, CIA, let it roll. This is important. No, I'm not I'm not doing no clips clips with no sound. That's ridiculous, but but I'm trying to get rid of music in this in the clips because they keep hitting me and crushing the channel for music in these clips. But this should be okay to go over. All right, I'm going to play it all and shut up so you can hear it this time. Well, it's like uh, I'm not surprised, but but to me, w I think the the more important picture is is that we have a colleague in, in the Senate that actually did much more sinister and, and serious kinds of things. Uh, Senator Menendez, uh, he needs to go. Um, and if you are going to expel Santos, how can you allow to somebody like Menendez to remain in the Senate? And you know, Santos's kind of lies were almost you know funny and like you know he you know, landed on the moon and it got kind of stuff. Uh, whereas, 
Whereas, you know, I, you know, I think, you know, Menendez, I think, is really a senator for Egypt, you know, not New Jersey. Uh, so I, 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 I really think he needs to go. And uh, especially it's kind of strange that if Santos uh, is not allowed to remain in the House, you know, someone like that. Yeah. Are you, though, uncomfortable with the fact that there hasn't been an adjudication, that while he's been charged, there hasn't been a conviction? Menendez. With Menendez. Uh, I, I, I am. I, I am. And it's like he has the right uh, to, for his, his day in court and all that. But he doesn't have the right to, to have those kind of votes and things that uh, yes. that's, not, that's not a right. And, and I think uh, we need to make that kind of decision to uh, send him out. Mm. So hit me in the comments if you heard that this time. I'm just sending the uh, the go ahead from the stream chat. I am seeing the Rumble stream on my phone at the moment. So hello, Dagnar and Para. Appreciate you guys popping in there. For whatever reason, it is showing up as like uh, a whole bunch of different showing up as spamming the chat. Like I, I typed five times. You guys typed five times. I don't know. We'll figure it out. But it is definitely a very interesting situation. trying to get all of these things together. One thing I will tell you, Jeff, did I check out the PS5 camera I bought? I did not. I will look at that. Uh, I will look at that today though. Also, I saw somebody else asking about uh, Up Church. We're going to look at that in a minute because I, I haven't seen it, but if he's comparing Nashville to San Francisco. I want to know about that. That's That's a pretty on the nose, brutal comparison. But I have heard Nashville is like where the Cowboys, it's like people go there and they wear cowboy boots and cowboy hats, but their cowboy boots have no scuffs on them. And their cowboy hats are, I don't know, they're just too pretty. They're, they're too pretty. They're fake rednecks, fake cowboys, that kind of thing. So you guys will have to let me know uh, if that's just me being rude or if that's actually reality. Rude. Okay, so I'm popping the chat. Yeah, we got another thing that somebody sent me from, uh, from the Discord. If you guys are not in the Discord, you should definitely Hop in there. You can send me stuff to go over in these thought casts. This is from the BBC and it's a bit cringy. I'm going to keep it real. It's very cringy. Uh, but it shows museum reclassifies Roman emperor as trans woman. It, it says a museum to is to relabel its display about a Roman emperor after concluding that he was in fact a trans woman. Northern Hertfordshire Museum will now refer to Emperor Ella Gal Ballas with a female pronouns instead of she and her. It comes after classical texts claim the emperor once said, call me not Lord, for I am a lady. A museum spokesperson said it was only polite and respectful to be sensitive to identifying pronouns for people in the past. The museum is one coin of Ella Gabalis, which is often displayed amongst other LGBTQ items in its collection. It is said it consulted some charity to ensure displays, publicity, and talks are as up-to-date and inclusive as possible. 
So this guy ruled the Roman Empire four years from 20, 218 AD to his assassination at age 18. So he was a minor, most likely. And at some point while he was a minor, said, don't call me a gentleman, call me a lady. And now they're saying he's trans. He became an increasingly controversial figure over his short reign, developing a reputation for promiscuity. Dude. Um, what? He was a minor. So, so as a minor, he got around in some way, possibly both ways, no ways, who knows? And they're like, yeah, no. It says he was married five times, four times to women, and once to Heracles, a former slave and chariot driver. In his final marriage, Dio writes that the emperor was bestowed in marriage and was termed wife, mistress, and queen. Oh, my goodness. The historians, we try to understand the life and extremely hostile towards him and therefore cannot be taken at face value. We don't have any direct evidence from Elagabalus himself of his own words. There are many examples in Roman literature of times where effeminate language and words were used to, as a way of criticizing or weakening a political figure. References to Elagabalus wearing makeup, wigs, and removing body hair may have been written in order to undermine the unpopular emperor. You think? Like, people talk crap about him. To, to undermine the power of the emperor. And they're like, no, 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 all that was true. He was a, a sissy boy. And actually, we're just going to say he identifies as a female now, this many years after death. That's insanity, dude. They're, I mean, we know they've been rewriting history for a while. Thank you, by the way, for sending that in the Discord. But come on. Really? Really? Yeah, I see Stephanie says, dear Lord. <laughs> Lynn, how beautiful the destruction of words. Yep. Yep. Kay Wheatley. Maybe he said it because he knew he was a beak. Yeah, that could be it. It definitely could be it. John Heflin, insane in the membrane. Proper. Quite, quite definitely insane in the membrane. All right. Now this one, this hits pretty close to home here. From rep Jim Jordan, the YouTube files, part two. YouTube, this is from a congressman. Oh, wait, Senator, Senator Jim Jordan. Still, don't, don't get mad. It says, to appease the Biden White House, big tech gave in to federal government's relentless pressure campaign to censor American speech, including true information. YouTube's, YouTube capitulated first, Facebook cave, caved next. Guys, the very first video, the very first video I posted on YouTube was... January 1st, 2022. And it was moved immediately and censored for disinformation. So, and it was true. It was, it was a doctor discussing the science of masking and how they were quite wrong in their assessments and claims with regard to the masks that said not suitable, not capable, not able to protect against these viruses. Uh, yeah, so there was a doctor correctly speaking on those things, and I just was talking about a clip of that. And yeah, they deleted that video and gave me my first strike, which is a warning on my main channel. So yeah, YouTube definitely caved. And when that happened, I then went over to uh, TikTok, Went through four accounts there uh, before trying to behave and coming back here. So I've been trying to behave ever since. I don't try to break the rules. I don't 
try to break the rules of these tech places. I'm just trying to tell the truth and expose what's going on so we can all be up to speed the best I can. It's pretty frustrating. Michelle C., welcome. Hey, Jeff. Thanks for coming. But yeah, I feel that. I feel that. And I'm hoping, hoping that they fix themselves and allow us to share just normal, truthful information of what's going on. Like, you got to let us do it, dude. Because Rumble will take over if you force us out. So I'm currently on Rumble and on YouTube. Because that's the way to be. And let me. So if you guys do not mind, when you get a chance, hop over to the Rumble and uh, just follow that channel if you have a Rumble account. All right. So from Daily Mail, Illinois court slaps down Juicy Smollett, Jesse Smollett, however you say it. You let me know how, how you're supposed to say it. Against disorder and a conviction, meaning he'll be forced to spend 150 days behind bars. So the court rejected his appeal. He was jailed for staging an anti-gay racist hate crime on himself and filing a false police report in 2019. He was sentenced to 150 days, but he only served six days before being released during his appeal. So now that they deny the appeal, he's got to go back to jail. That's what it looks like. There we go. And here's the, the famous picture of the brothers that helped him with his, uh, his little hate crime. Isn't that kind of funny. Michelle said, did you get that chat stuff figured out? Um, sort of, I see Mama Wheatley popped over in the chat. I'm looking at it on my phone as a second chat screen. So hopefully that helps. Oh yeah, comment. What do you think about Juicy? This is one of those like a million pop-up ad links. I got to get out of here. Bogging my stuff down. Juicy smack me with a Subway sandwich. <laughs> yeah, who goes to get Subway at like three in the morning? That was the dumbest. That was the dumbest fake hate crime I've ever seen. Michelle, see, I might flip over there as YouTube seems to be having issues today. You keep breaking up. Yeah, go uh, swap over and check it out if that's the problem. Hang on, let me uh, see what else I got open. I'll... Got it. Trying to debug the system here. Should be better now. Bagnar says I do. You get three you get sandwiches at three in the morning? Okay. I guess there are some people that do. All right. Now, here's the Daily Beast. Well known left wing crazy people. Who cares if Trump's gag orders violate the First Amendment? Opinion by Shan Wu. Look, I'm not uh I'm not overly sure. But Shan Wu sounds like a commie. And that's some commie stuff. 
Let's see from Mama over on Rumble. It says 12 watching, but only two likes. WTF, people. Slam that like button. Yeah, please. You guys wouldn't mind listening to uh, Mama Wheatley and dropping a like over there. It would go a long way in my brand new channel. And if you have the account, please follow that brand new channel because I want to have the thought cast blow up as the solo news stream on Rumble. Just like I'm going to have Jeff Aside Live blow up as the entertainment night stream on Rumble. And just so you guys know, the main page, Freedom to Think, I've seen a small uptick in comments coming from old videos because I think since I've decluttered some of the mess of crazy stuff on there, they're starting to recommend the videos more to people. I'm not holding my breath, but that's kind of the whole point that I want it to be. Hacking the algorithm. Bum, bum, bum. All right. So let me go up to this uh, on the gag order. There we go. From Disclose TV. It says appeals court reinstates Trump gag order in New York civil tax fraud case. A state appeals court in New York reinstated a gag order against President Trump and his lawyers in the 250 million civil fraud case against the former president and his company, rejecting his argument that the order was unconstitutional. Wow. So they blatantly, obviously violated his First Amendment. <coughs> and they just don't care. They're like, so what? It's Trump. We can do whatever we want to Trump because he's bad. And the Daily Beast is admitting openly, so what if it violates his First Amendment? So so we, we are admitting we're violating the First Amendment. That's very important. That's what I'm trying to get across to you guys. Debbie, that judge most likely was threatened by the guys paying him. Yeah, yeah, very possibly. Aria, you said, yeah, I haven't been able to either. What are you not able to? Trying to figure out how to change my name on here. Okay, you guys are trying to figure out Rumble too. Dude, welcome to the club. I'm going to make Rumble work because I feel like we got to if we're going to succeed in this in this battle here. We got to use it, but it's difficult. So work with me, Rumble, and I'll work with you. If you guys follow me there, if you chat, if you like the stuff, share is nice, then, then I'll put in the effort because it, it is effort to use their UI, their interface. Like it's not... Not as good yet. It can be upgraded to be as good, but it's not there yet. So I'm trying to play the long game with that a little bit. Same with Twitter X. Although I'm a little more confident in uh, the mega dweebs following Elon Musk to get that up to speed. No offense to the Rumble people, but it's just a tech thing. All right, now I see this. It says, top Ramaswamy aide resigns to start working for the Trump campaign. Now, this isn't really news. This isn't really news because it's over. Like, they, they had this debate, all right? And I had a little clip I haven't watched yet, um, but we'll watch it. But it's it's over. I mean, like, look at this. Here's from the source is Harris X. I don't know who Harris X is, but there's a lot of these kind of polls. You got Trump, 68 percent. He's got a 59 point lead with everyone else. And they're in the single digits. You got Ron at nine, Nikki Haley at seven. You got uh, Ramaswamy at four and then Christie's at one percent. Which is hilarious because Chris Christie's over there on like mainstream news saying my campaign is gaining momentum. Bro, you're not gaining any momentum. I, I was, Keegan was making a fire and I told her, I laughed because I just saw that. 
And I was like, dude, Chris Christie says that he's gaining momentum in the campaign against Trump. And Keegan said, and I quote, isn't, isn't that the 500 pound rhino? Yes. Yes, he is. I thought that was the greatest, <laughs> the greatest question ever. Is that the 500 pound rhino? Yeah. Republican in name only. Chris Christie is the ultimate rhino. Or as I like to say, the peach state Lizzo. <laughs> I'm sorry, the garden state Lizzo. <laughs> Which, uh, that's mean. That's mean. To Lizzo. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's so, that's so bad. All right. So now, uh, speaking of rhinos, Miss Piggy, Liz Cheney, claiming the U.S. is sleepwalking into a dictatorship with Trump, you know. You say Donald Trump, if he is reelected, it will be the end of the republic. What do you mean? He's told us what he will do. It, it's very easy to see the steps that he will take. People who say, well, if he's elected, it's not that dangerous because we have all of these checks and balances, uh, don't fully understand the extent to which the Republicans in Congress today um, have been co-opted. One of the things that we see happening today is a sort of a, a sleepwalking into a dictatorship in the United States. I just, I don't know how these people can get on stage, how they can get on camera and talk. Like how on earth can you sit there and just say stuff like that? I, if I can find it, I really want to share it because there was a media clip where people were talking about what's going on with, um, with Democrats versus Republicans and how they are interacting with their constituents. And it's pretty amazing. I'll send it to you guys if I can find it later, but that's okay. But essentially they're saying Democrats hate their constituents and then Republicans are afraid of their constituents. I think that's pretty accurate. So the people like Liz Cheney and Mitt Romney and all them, they're like, how are you letting your base control you? And it's like, cause, cause we work for them. That's the whole point. We are the people to be served by the, the elected officials. It's a public service. They're not Kings and Queens, but the Democrats think that they're the Kings and Queens, obviously the rhinos and all them who've had a little bit of too much sip of the power juice are feeling the same way. Uh, but the populist movement that's coming from the right side with Trump is is just saying, no, like we want this. And the Republicans are like, well, we can get you this. And we're like, we don't want that. We want this. They're like, well, it's pretty tough to get that. I don't know. And they're like, we will primary you. We will kick you out. We'll vote for someone else. You can't just sit there with a pretty smile and give us nothing. And that's what the Republicans have been doing nonstop, which I respect honestly less than the Democrats, because at least the Democrats have like a wheelbarrow that they've got their giant nuts in and they have to wheelbarrow their nuts in, you know, because it takes so much gall and so much spine to be that evil and gaslight everybody all day, every day. I mean, they're just Bond villains the whole time, whereas the Republicans are, are controlled opposition and they're just pretending they're on our side 90% of the time. It's really frustrating. They all, they all got to go. It just seems like they all got to go. All right. Now, uh, back to the Trump thing. You have this. He posted. 
a Deutsche Bank managing director who was involved in approving loans to the Trump organization for several of its most prominent properties testified as a defense witness. Williams said that before making the loans, I think it's Deutsche. If I said it wrong, just who cares? USA for the dub. So they did their own due diligence on Trump's net worth and values of his properties. When Trump's lawyer asked, is the bank capable of reaching its own judgment based on the evaluation it makes of the guarantor's financial condition, William answered, Really, bro? Hang on. I'll just read it. He answered, certainly yes. Then Williams said, as part of our due diligence, we subject the client's asset value to adjustments. It's part of our underwriting process. We apply it to every client regardless of what's reported. Trump's lawyer asked, is a difference of opinion in asset values between the client and the bank a disqualifying factor to extend credit? Williams answered, no. The lawyer asked, why not? William answered, it's just a difference of opinion. If I say... This is worth $100. And then a bank comes and says, hey, yeah, it's worth $100. And then some asshole lawyer shows up and says, I think it's worth $5. You lied about how much it's worth. That doesn't matter. The lawyer can go you know where. It has nothing to do with you saying it's this and then them checking and saying it's this. Trump did nothing wrong. He has absolutely no reason to be even in this court case. You all know, I know, they know, but it's just the, the half-witted, half-brained people. Honestly, just like almost all the left. I mean, I, it hurts. It hurts so bad that they think he's in trouble for something he did. And he did nothing. What? Okay, fine, fine, I'm cool, I'm fine. It's okay. It's okay. You just gotta get worked up sometimes. All right. Anyway, it's no problem, guys. It's no problem. Hey, my chat just fixed itself. Oh, and then it disappeared. No, it's good. Oh, that's awesome. So I'm reading the chat. You guys are flying up through here. Dang. All right. That's a lot of people. I have this I have one less person on Rumble watching than I have on YouTube. And Rumble has zero followers. So there's some discoverability on Rumble in live streams. Posting videos, it's pretty hopeless. I'm not going to lie. There's no algorithm whatsoever. But posting live streams, there's a chance. So ThoughtCast will be one of the main, one of the live streams that goes on Rumble. And then Jefferside Live. I keep reiterating it. Um, but if you like the content, like it and subscribe to both channels. Uh, either, you know, the YouTube channels, depending on what your interests are, and then the Rumble channels, if you uh, care to support me on both. John says, did I fix the the Rumble live stream? Uh, I believe it's going. It shows there's a bunch of people on it. I see chat coming through, but at the moment, I'm viewing the chat on my phone. So I'll have to figure out how to get it meshed. Uh, and I'll see if I could do like an overlay or something. I'm using StreamYard, which costs money. Uh, a bunch of money, so I wish that it did a couple extra things, but it's pretty good. Like, I can insert clips and share the extra screens with you pretty well, uh, and it seems a little bit more professional for this kind of thing, and I can send invites to get other people on the show, uh, like I've done with the co-opted the co lives or coordinated lives with Armando. All right, so here's the biggest gaslighting in the history of forever. This might be the worst. I'm not lying. The Atlantic, 
Inflation is your fault. Jesus, man. First, it's so what if we violate Trump's First Amendment? Now it's inflation is your fault. If people are so mad <coughs> about high prices, why do they keep buying so many expensive things? Well, Annie Laurie, let me explain something. It's called white privilege, okay? White privilege is this magical, mystical thing that doesn't really actually exist. It's actually just wealth privilege. So if you're wealthy and your income really doesn't matter compared to your expenses, you know, once you reach a certain point beyond paying your bills, then if gas is $4 or $2 or $7, it just doesn't matter. If steak is $10 or $15 or $50, it just doesn't matter. You know, you got so much coinage that it's kind of irrelevant how shitty the economy is. Whereas for me and a lot of you and the evaporating middle class, 1% inflation with Trump was freaking awesome, okay? We got to fill our cars with gas. We got to eat a lot of steak. We got to go on maybe an extra vacation. You got to buy your wife something nice. You know what I mean? And you still had money in the bank. That was beautiful. But under Biden and all of these horrendous intentional policy decisions, that are destroying our dollar. We're buying expensive things because we have to buy groceries, Annie. Cheese, the cheese bag was like $3 and now it's $7. The crackers, I used to get the great value four sleeves of uh, crackers for 75 cents. Annie, you know how much they are now? It's like 172 cents, $1.72. That's about a hundred, that's over a hundred percent inflation, by the way. So whoever came up with this 3% thing is full of shit. I'm not buying it. I don't know where they come up with the numbers because you got stuff that's over double what it was three years ago. Have you seen soda? I mean, you shouldn't drink soda, sure but a lot of people do and it's really expensive. You get the little chip bags. It was like 25 cents a, a bag in bulk. Now it's like 48 cents a bag in bulk for your little kid's lunch meal, you know? So we're buying expensive things because the expensive things are food and gas and you need food and gas, Annie. And because your masters who you serve keep sending our money somewhere else. And that's compounding the inflation. So someone needs to talk to Annie because, uh, you went full retard, man. Never go full retard. She missed the mark. She missed the mark completely with this one. That's just embarrassing. I burst a blood vessel in my eye the other day, and I really believe that it was from stress. But from what I understand, it's actually from like rubbing your eye. And then I realized it was from wrestling with my kids on the trampoline because we go hard, like flips, spins, elbows. And I mean, they and they try to gang up on me. <laughs> so I think when one of them was stepping and bouncing and slamming onto me. They just like cracked my face and burst a blood vessel. But it looks like it's just from stress. And with the pulsing, it feels like it's from stress. So it is what it is. Anyway, Elon Musk is looking at this. So this is a survey showing the relationship between platform usage and anti-Semitic, anti-Israel views. It shows TikTok and Instagram have kind of a massive correlation 
comparative of anti-Semitic and anti-Israel views for people that use TikTok and people that use Instagram over people that use Twitter X. Now it's possible that these are like lying with statistics because it's based on since it switched from Twitter to X, but actually that'd be an even better example because that's under the leadership of Elon, which is what Disney and all these other D bags are trying to uh, get rid of. They're trying to get rid of X and stop running ads on X because of anti-Semitism, which really isn't anti-Semitism. It's just things that don't agree with the left. And Elon is telling them that they could take two of those and uh, hit the bricks, dude, because they're lying. They're totally lying. It's not connected. It's not anti-Semitic to promote the truth. It's not anti-Semitic to say freedom of speech should be a thing. It's not anti-Semitic to question Israel if you're just like, hey, you know, maybe you shouldn't do this to this extreme. And they're like, oh, so you're an anti-Semite now, huh? You don't want to give a gajillion dollars to Israel and all the blood of our sons and daughters to go fight the whole world on their behalf. And it's like, uh, yeah, no, we got our own problems. Like, I got nothing against you defending yourself. I have something against me paying for your offensive. Get, get out of here with this nasty craziness. Dagnar says and Disney has lost a lot of subs to Disney plus. Yeah. Yeah. Their, their whole model is kind of wrecking itself and imploding. Tommy says, since when is the left against anti-Semitism? I know. What this is, this is an amazing and crazy thing that happened that now we have the left where you have very high level, basically shills for Israel in charge of the left. And then you have like the BLM people that all of a sudden like took a hard turn to go cheer on Hamas and the whole Palestinian apartheid, whatever debate. And so, so you have them saying that Hamas is righteous in what they're doing, which is insane. That's just insane the way that they're taking that stance. And then the other people kind of in charge of the left are like, no, like we don't do that. We do this. And honestly, the left has always completely agreed on messaging. So they don't even know what to do with themselves. Conservatives often disagree. Like I disagree with a lot of people on my own side because I'm like the free thinking conspiracist libertarian gamer dude. Like I'm not a straight up Republican. I'm definitely conservative leaning, but there's a lot of conservatives that say stuff. and like, no, don't agree. Or this evidence came out and I think that's trash. Or you obviously seem to be a shill or controlled opposition or whatever. I just try to find whatever I can that's as close to the truth as possible with whatever good information I have. And it could change if new good information comes in. So I try to keep it open, free thinking, right? That's the dream. That's the goal here. But the left is just someone with a whip cracking. And they're like, this is what we're believing today. This is what we're doing today. This is what we're worshiping today. And they all buy it or they're too afraid to step out of line and then fight the rest of the zombified mob. That's all, you know, mind virus taken over. So that's the left. And then the right, like I can like Tyson James music and then disagree on some the theology things and not be like, yeah, you know, maybe I think that's a little bit further than what I believe, but you believe it. And I like the song, so it's cool. So that's kind of the difference. You got people at different levels in different ways on the conservative side. And then on the left, you're either on one plane or you're the enemy. And right now they have two planes running at the same time. So they've created enemies within the one side, like hard enemies. And that's not something they're used to dealing with. They created radicals and then lost control of the radicals. So now what? I don't know, but I'd be very interested to find out with you guys.
Tommy says, Elon told Disney CEO to F off. I know that was the most awesome thing ever. I'm going to make like a whole video about that. Um, I'm really excited about that video, but we'll see if people like it or not, but it doesn't matter. That's going to be, that's a, something that's brewing. Got to do something for Elon on that. Now, I don't know if you guys knew, but apparently uh, the Biden Christmas tree fell over. The presidential Christmas tree, literally, just fell off, fell over. I should have played this right after. The inflation is your fault. It shows it pays to be friends with Zelensky, how $75 million yachts reveal the huge and sudden wealth of the leader's inner circle. Who, who did we send $100 billion to? Recently? But yeah, inflation's my fault because I buy the expensive cheese. Annie. Freaking hell. <clears throat> all right, we all saw it coming, but now here it is. MMA champion Conor McGregor under investigation for online hate speech following remarks after children were stabbed by Algerian immigrant in Dublin. So an Algerian immigrant stabs a bunch of people, including children, in Dublin, Ireland. The Irish are sick of it because they're like, hey, our country is being invaded by people who are not allowed to be here and happen to be causing problems, including violence against our women and children. So they're like, this isn't cool. And then the left slash globalists are like, no, 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 no. We must welcome everyone, diversity, inclusion, no, all of earth without borders. And I'm just like, I'm just like I, the Irish. I agree. Close the border, vet people, let in the ones that benefit society. You can't just have an open border. It doesn't work. Crime is a thing. Trafficking is a thing. Gangs and cartels are a thing. You're just going to have like a narco state like what we have basically at the southern border right now. It's pretty sad that we're at this point, but that's where we are. Anyone that talks against the system will be attacked by the system. All right, I felt this. I felt this so hard, you guys. It is December. Christmas is here. It's about to be. And we have taken so much in this Biden presidency. It is, it's painful. Like this... This is what we all feel right now. We're done. We're over it. It's just like, you know, it's bad. You know, it's coming. It just hurts, man. You got people everywhere are like, how am I going to pay my bills? And then it's to this situation now. And we got another whole year of this bullshit. And I don't even, I don't even know how we get through it. 
honestly. Because luckily my wife in her infinite wisdom told me a couple of years ago, if you're going to do this thing, you need to do it now because it's going to get so bad that no one's going to have the means or the capacity or the inventory to get you what you need to be able to do it. So I did all this studio creation, construction, finagling when I could afford it uh, because I, I couldn't get any piece of equipment that's in here right now if I needed to start today. And that's how bad it is for a lot of people. So I get it. I know. And if you don't mind, throw a like on the stream, follow, subscribe, check me out on Twitter X, Twix, as I like to call it. Um, yeah. This has been a good stream. I got to figure out how to like have rolling credits because I just got to end it like right away. So I got to update my December credits and then I'll just play them at some point midway through the stream next time. But I got to go because the algorithm is killing me by having a long outro. So it just needs to like...